thank everyone for being here tonight. Normally on Wednesdays, I'm working and I can't be on all the time. Although when I am working, I try as often as possible to at least sign into the Zoom and be able to be a part of the Bible class as much as possible. Uh, Jonathan was scheduled to speak, but he's in class. It was last week and Eric graciously took last week and I told him I'd swap and would do tonight. So with that in mind, if you would be turning in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Galatians 5, 19. While you're doing this, I'm going to give you a backstory on how I came up with this lesson. Since I've been out for my surgery, I've had a lot of time on my hands. I've done a lot of reading, and I try to keep up with the news as often as possible. And I happened to come across a an article that I thought was somewhat interesting because it really fits into the way the world thinks today. And the article was about a particular actress who was on the TV show Dancing with the Stars. And it said that she pulls the curtain back on the show's sexual chemistry. And so we know as Christians uh, that dancing is something that we should not be engaged in anyway. But when you have someone from the world who says that it causes a sexual chemistry when you're engaged in such an activity, it helps us to see even more what the Bible teaches and why we're to abstain from those things. Now I want to read some excerpts from the article. I'm only going to read a few brief excerpts. Uh, the whole article would take too long. Plus it goes into some detail. I don't feel like I need to go into tonight in, in this particular setting, especially with children, but we understand a lot of the things that go on in this world. And we understand the sins that are categorized in the Bible from which we are to abstain. But it started out says, saying Dancing with the Stars has a long history of bringing together celebrities and dancing pros, both for the sake of competition and for something more. And they go in and talk about how some have made deep connections and they some began dating. And one recent contestant, they saw a former contestant, admitted to considering having an affair with her partner, Derek Howe, based on how intimate their routines felt. Now, that ought to tell us everything we didn't know as Christians that we already knew, yet we have even some members of the Lord's Church try to justify and pacify those who want to engage in, in dancing and saying that it doesn't cause these feelings. And you have a person of the world who, in her own words, says it does that. And she said that, I mean, it goes on in this article saying that Dancing with the Stars has had a long string of such activities and connections that have been made as a result of males and females dancing together. This actress who was on it at that time said, and this is her words, you're entwined with someone's body when you're a dancer. And she said, there's no way that I have ever been so connected besides with a lover or husband than I was with Derek, her partner. She said for three months, you're in someone's arms. Why do you think people fall in love? The more intimate uh, that these routines become, she said, is like making love in the bedroom. You're doing this on the dance floor and you feel connected. Folks, this is enough to show us and help us understand that we already know what the Bible teaches on the subject. But I want to ask the question, is dancing sinful? In the early 1980s, there were two popular movies about dancing that took place. The one was Footloose, the other was Dirty Dancing. And even in the their own words of those who were involved in these movies and the background of one of the movies at least said that there were teens who felt hindered by their parents and their parents were not letting them do what they wanted to do. And they centered around dancing as a way of rebellion to show their parents that they would do what they wanted to do. Folks, we see how Hollywood has an influence on society and how it can change society. And sadly enough, it has. Not only has it changed society, it has changed the church as well. Opinions can be influenced by the way that topics are discussed in a movie or even in a social setting. And if you look at Galatians 5, 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and the such like, 
of which I tell you before, as I've told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Folks, those people in this list that we just read will not be in heaven. And if we go back to verse 19, each one of those in verse, verse 19, in some way or another, has reference to sexual type sins. I want to key in on the very last one in that verse, lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? Lasciviousness is a type of wickedness that is mentioned and condemned several times in the New Testament. But do we know what's involved in order to abstain from it? Well, if you don't know, we're going to discuss that tonight and help us understand more about what this particular word is and how it affects people in the world today. Lasciviousness is defined as, quote, indecency, wanton acts or manners, filthy words, indecent bodily movements, unchaste handling of males and females. Just from that definition, one can see that lasciviousness is a broad term that doesn't identify any single sinful act, but many sinful acts. Lasciviousness would be involved in any type of lewd talk or off-color jokes. The Lord's apostles declared in Ephesians 5, 4, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. This is what Paul wrote when he wrote the Ephesians. We, don't, we should not have filthiness or foolish talking or jesting, which is not convenient. We need to be a thankful people. We need to be thankful for what God has done for us and the blessings that we have in Christ as a result of obeying the gospel. But we're commanded in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Since lasciviousness involves indecency, one could be guilty of, guilty of that simply in the way they dress. You look at the modern dress today, or the lack of it. Clothes with low-cut fronts and backs, mini skirts, short shorts, halter tops, midriffs, swimsuits, are considered by most in this world, acceptable dress. But in the eyes of God and the teaching of the Bible, it is not. But just because something is acceptable to the world does not mean it is acceptable to God. To reveal one's nakedness is something that is described in, in scriptures as shameful and sinful. In fact, God used the term nakedness figuratively in the scriptures to describe sin and wickedness. Look at Ezekiel 16, 36. Ezekiel wrote, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all them that thou hast loved, with all them that thou hast hated, and I will gather them round about against thee, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. So we can see even using the term nakedness figuratively, it describes the wickedness and sinful actions and lifestyles of so many people back then. But folks, it still gives the same today. There's still people who are figuratively and sometimes literally showing their nakedness by the life they're living or the clothes that they're wearing. The Apostle Paul wrote, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. First Peter chapter, or First Timothy chapter 2, Verse 9, this also would apply to men as well. Men think that they can go around, well, I'm a man, I'm not a woman, I can go around with no shirt on or short shorts and parade around the streets or in the yard or however I want to. Now, folks, all of us have the responsibility to God to have purity and modesty in our dress and in our lives. To fail to follow this instruction is to dress lasciviously, Essentially, 
And again, we see this happening on a regular basis. It's interesting that that article happened to pop up on Fox News about the time this past week that I had seen many posts on Facebook about homecoming. And of course, you can't have homecoming without the homecoming dance. And there are so many young ladies, especially, that were plastering pictures or their parents were plastering their pictures all over Facebook in very immodest, provocative outfits that no one should be wearing. But being of the world, there are many par parents who not only condoned it, but supported it and thought they just looked so cute. But folks, it's sinful. And the sad part about it is I've seen people on my Facebook feed who are members of the Lord's church in various places. And they do the same thing. For years, and David, I know, has battled this, and anyone who's ever preached at any length of time has battled in congregations of those homecoming dances, proms, and the immodest dress that occurs, unfortunately, not only there, but I've seen it in worship where young ladies have come dressed very immodestly to worship. One of the places I was preaching, we had an issue with that, and the elders asked me to preach on it. What they didn't know, I was already working on the sermon because a couple of instances we had one Sunday with an immodest dress. And one of the elders got up and spoke for 15 minutes before I started my sermon on what I was about to preach and said, you parents need to start paying attention to what your kids wear what some of them are wearing is sinful and immodest, and that doesn't belong in the life of a Christian. And then I did my sermon for almost an hour on that particular subject. And as a result, we lost some families because rather than repenting and saying, yes, my daughters were dressed immodestly, they just got mad and left and went somewhere that would accept their dress. And unfortunately, there are a lot of churches of Christ who loosely wear that name that have no problem with that. But this is something that we deal with in the world today and we're dealing with, unfortunately, in the church. Last service is also listed among the works of the flesh. And we just mentioned in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Yet it's condoned by so many people and encouraged children to participate in so many activities that are sinful. Not only well, these children, if they don't repent and change their lives, lose their soul, but the parents will as well. And the parents, because they condone it and support it. There are some parents who might not dress that way, but they're living out their childhood through their children by allowing their children to do those things, which are unbecoming of a Christian and just simply sinful. We do know in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Jesus tells us that those who are going in the wide gate are going in the way of destruction. It says many there be which go in there at. There are so many people today, the majority of the world, who are following the majority, and they're going to lose their soul eternally because they want it their way, no matter what anyone else says. Next, we can see that modern dancing is sinful because it is sexual in nature. Let me read you a quote from Alita S. Hollingsworth, a child psychologist. She said, dancing affords a partial satisfaction to the sex impulse, which among ad adolescents cannot as yet achieve full and specific expression. Even these child psychologists can see what happens and what it does to people and where it leads people. And wonder why there's so much teen pregnancy why there's so many young ladies having babies at 12, 13, and 14 years old. I saw a cartoon a few years ago that showed a small child, and she was shaking and gyrating, and the mother was saying, oh, you go, you go, that's so funny. And then the next picture showed her teenage daughter pregnant, and the mother said, where did I go wrong? Obviously, obviously she went wrong by allowing her daughter to dress the way she did, go to dances and do the things that she shouldn't be doing. And I know that was a cartoon, but it aptly presented life because that happens in real life every day. We know that modern dancing is lustful. Lust is applied to sexual passions. 
And Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Modern dancing is also associated with other evils of this world. It's associated with drinking, with drug use. It involves being with even companionship. It often leads to fornication and adultery. And folks, as Christians, we should avoid anything that closely is associated with any kind of evil. Paul told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupts good morals. Our evil companions can corrupt us. Some parents have children that are growing up trying to do what is right, but the parents start seeing a change in the children. I dealt with this just recently in a neighborhood where I patrol, where a dad said, I've never had any trouble out of my son. He's been respectful. He's been good. But he came in today and was totally disrespectful to me and to his mother. And then he left the house and they were out looking for him. He would basically run away for the short period of time. He wasn't going to go away very long. And his parents really knew that. But he was mad because he didn't get his way. He had the attitude, I'll do what I want to do. But when they took his phone away from him, then to him, his world ended. He didn't know what to do. He had no phone and he got mad. And it was very likely because of companionship. I can't say 100% sure, but usually these kids start acting out at home what they see at school and what they see among their friends or what they start doing with their friends. But as Christians, we need to avoid all those things associated with evil. As a matter of fact, Paul told the Thessalonians, the first Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Next, we can see that modern dancing destroys our influence for good. Brother Marshall Keeble once said, a dancing foot and a praying knee are not found on the same leg. And how we know that is so true. You can't engage in simple activity and then turn right around and pray to God and think God will accept your prayers and hear your prayers. Matthew 5, 16 teaches us to let our light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Next, we can also see that modern dancing places a stumbling block before others. What effect might dancing have on others? Well, you can look at the decorum, both in dress and conduct. You can look at that in the good and the bad way. If you have modest clothing, modest decorum, modest conduct, then we see that <clears throat> during those times, you can be a good influence to other people. But if we dress like the world and we act like the world, talk like the world, then we're going to be of the world, not of Christ. And then we're setting a bad example and being a stumbling block. We need to look at every aspect of our life, whether it comes from modesty, conduct, dancing, whatever it may be that we see in this life, that we engage in only those activities that are wholesome and right in the sight of God. First John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 we can read, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the, wor the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, they are of the world. The world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. I know in these Wednesday night classes, we have various lessons, and this is maybe one's a little different. But folks, we can see all these things going around us. And this time of the year with homecoming and homecoming dances. And even though it's getting cool, people are still dressing immodestly. And we've been dealing with that all summer, especially with the uh, excessive heat we had this summer. We have seen more and more people losing more and more clothes. And people has even commented to me, why do you wear blue jeans? Why don't you have some shorts on? Well, I don't do that because I'm a Christian. And I want to set a good example to others. 
I'm not going to dress like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, just to fit in with someone. And neither should you. None of us should act in a way that's going to be un unbecoming of a Christian. And that's going to be doing such that's going to hurt our influence. Well, this evening we have observed that lasciviousness is a sin and it will keep someone out of heaven. Furthermore, as Christians, we must fight against the wiles of the devil. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, we have the armor which we're to wear to fight against Satan. And one of those pieces is taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we can use that to fight against Satan and his army on a daily basis. However, when we give in to them and say, well, just one dance won't hurt. One party won't hurt. Going out and wearing these clothes just one time won't hurt. Then we're giving into the world. And sin is in our lives at that point. Our influence can be positive and fruitful when we abstain from all forms of evil and we teach others to do as well. And I hope that as we go forward in our lives that we will live a faithful Christian life that will set the example. And when it comes to anything that we can read about in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, that we abstain from those things so that one day we can have heaven is our eternal home. I want to thank you tonight for your attention.